Hello and welcome to the Scott Sports Show. I'm Drew Patrick. I'm joined alongside my partner here, George Tubby Schmidt. And we're going to start this show the way we start every show with the Edinburgh Scots of the Week. Let's start on the women's side. The Edinburgh Female Scott of the Week is Alex Brown of the soccer team. She scored Edinburgh's third goal, a 25-yarder from the left side in the team's 3-2 win at Mercyhurst on Wednesday. She followed that up with a fifth-minute penalty kick goal against Bloomsburg that ended up being the deciding score to help the Fighting Scots prevail 1-0. She also sang the national anthem at that game. Congratulations to Alex Brown, your female Scott of the Week. Your male Scott of the Week is Vitor Albanese. Albanese was crowned PSAC singles champion on Sunday for the second straight year. I finished runners-up in PSAC doubles championship with teammate Daniel Fernandez. He posted singles wins against Bloomsburg, Gerard Puig, and Deer Gala. He also defeated teammate Mercurcio Santos and defeated Westchester's Norman Patton in the finals 6-0 and 2-6 and 10-8. Congratulations to Vitor Albanese, your male Scott of the Week. Don't go anywhere. We will kick off the Scott Sports Show with football coming right up. Stay, stay right here. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. So good to see you guys. So, what's up? Oh, we finally bought a place. Holy cow. You seriously have enough saved to do that? We've been putting a little aside each month. Mm -hmm. Jeez, at the end of the month, we have nothing left to save. Yeah, I have no idea where it goes. Well, you're mm -hmm. spending a lot on... Mm -hmm. Is it good? Oh, God. Oh, how is my account overdrawn? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. Welcome back to the Scott Sports Show. Let's talk some football now as we're joined by wide receivers coach Joe Watson. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, Coach, you ha have a, a unique perspective. You're one of the coaches who were brought back from uh, the, the Scott Browning era. Mm -hmm. What changes have you seen and what changes have you, you, you've done personally between the two years? Um, one thing I think bigger than anything else is just attention to detail. Mm -hmm. um, we have more coaches, so you can you know, spend more time on details. Um, I mean, really, scheme-wise and personnel-wise, we're the same as we were last year. Mm -hmm. so I think that attention to detail is one thing that's really changed. And like I said, with the amount of coaches we have now, we can really focus on that detail. With, with the amount of uh, wide receivers you have that are performing mm -hmm. well, I mean, there's, uh, you have uh, Caratelli with a lot of yards. You have uh, Tanaz Gregory, who was a uh, freshman coming out, uh, James Clark, and then Williams, Jordan Williams as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's that like as a coach to have so many of your guys performing so well? Well, I think a thing right now for us and in, in our receiver group is, uh, you know, every play it's somebody different. Um, you know, one game it's somebody having 10 catches, 12 catches, next game it's somebody else. And really it's just dictating what the defense gives us. You know, last week we had two inside receivers, one had 10, one had 13 catches. The week before we had an outside receiver with 10 catches. So, you know, we're taking what the defense has given us and that uh, pretty much allows us to do what we want in our game plan. And as a former quarterback here at Edinburgh, mm -hmm. What can you bring to the wide receivers group? Uh, I think one of the, the best things when I was a player here is our quarterback coach was also our wide receiver coach. So in all of our meetings at that time, uh, we were being coached as quarterbacks, but with the re receivers in mind as well. So uh, that really helped me transition into coaching wide receivers because basically my entire time in college, it, every meeting they had, I had as well. So that's really helped me transition there. So let's talk about this past game. It was homecoming. Mm -hmm. You know, when you, when you talk about homecoming, there's a lot of distractions that come with homecoming. We had a chance to talk with Coach Lustig about how the team handled it. But from your perspective, how do you feel the team handled all the distraction of homecoming? You know, I thought it was good for us. Um, you know, one thing I told my guys especially was homecoming is for people that come back. Mm -hmm. You know, 
we're here to win a game. This is that's our focus all week. And you know, in three, four, five years, you can come back to school. Homecoming be for you then. But really, we're, our one mission all week was to beat Gannon. And beat Gannon you did. again. The offense putting a forty burger on a team. Mm -hmm. They've done that a couple times. As an offensive coach, seeing your receivers do so well, and as you mentioned earlier. It's receiver by committee. It doesn't matter whoever is, is open and who's ever going to have a, a great day mm -hmm. will. So what is that like to, to see as, as a coach? Uh, it's exciting for my guys, you know, and, and it's great to see all the hard work we put in pays mm -hmm. off at the end of the week. You know, the thing I'd say for them, and they'd tell you the same, is, you know, we can't do it without great line play. We can't do it without quarterback play, running back play. So, you know, we're a piece of that. But, uh, you know, as a group, our group has definitely performed well. Hey, coach, when you uh, – Having this many this many wide receivers functioning so well and just executing, mm -hmm. um, really creating a nightmare for for the defense. Is that kind of like a, a little feather in your cap? You kind of nice. Your head you know, I, I would say every week I expect us to play well, mm -hmm. and I, honestly, I never know who it's going to be. Like I said before, you know, last week it was Tanaz and Alex. The week before it was James Clark. You know, really game plan. It's hard to tell sometimes because you don't always get what you see on film. Um, also, when they ex mm -hmm. I've noticed a lot that they get, um, especially with these Edinburgh receivers, they get a lot of yards after the catch. Mm -hmm. How do you go in working on that aspect of their game? Uh, we focus on, you know, securing the catch more than anything else, but after that, it's just make a play. You know, mm -hmm. I think right now we have a bunch of guys that can make plays. Uh, we don't necessarily have possession guys, but we have guys that can do things with the ball in their hand. And, you know, you look at some of our guys that are our best special teams players, they're our best returners. So I think that's really important for our guys. We have playmakers out there. And this week coming up, we have uh, another local rival in, in Mercyhurst. We get to travel to Mercyhurst. Now, we get to sleep in our own bed, but it's an away contest. What are the challenges with, with preparing for that? Uh, the nice thing about being a 20-minute trip is basically our schedule is exactly the same. We mm -hmm. eat breakfast here on campus like normal. You know, a 20-minute bus ride is the same time that they would really have to go home after breakfast. So for us, it's really kind of nice because mm -hmm. you stay in your normal home game routine. And so, looking at Mercyhurst, seeing what they, they have to offer, what is your goal for, for your unit this week? You know, I would say right now, as we say every week, we want to play fast and start fast. And you look at the last two weeks for us, you know, we've jumped out early in games. Mm -hmm. I really think if we can dictate the pace of the game, that's a big thing for us. All right, Coach. Well, thank you so much. We wish you the, the very best this week. No problem. Thank you. And the Scott Sports Show will roll along right after this. Don't go anywhere. To compete for a championship in stadiums full with cheering fans and families. To give back. To say thank you for your support. To learn, grow, and prepare for the future. Ask any NCAA student athlete what they want, and this is what they'll tell you. Ask these student athletes, and they'll say with pride, I chose Division II. The NCAA Division II Student Athlete Experience goes beyond the classrooms and playing fields. It means a commitment to service and community, helping organizations like the Make-A-Wish Foundation by raising money to help grant the wishes of children with life-threatening medical conditions. Kids like Jacob. Some student athletes gave of their time and their energy to raise the money. It was fun to meet Jeff Gordon. NCAA Division II, training student athletes for lifelong achievement. Welcome back to the Scott Sports Show. We'll continue to talk football as we're now joined by linebacker Austin Meats and running back Walter Fletcher. Thank you guys both for joining us. Thanks for having us. So let's start this past week. It was homecoming. There was a lot of stuff happening. How did you guys stay focused and, and ready to, to play the game? I mean, uh, it's pretty much what it was. I mean, it's homecoming, so there's a ton of stuff going on, a ton of distractions, but we just did our thing. We, just, we had no, our normal routine, same practice schedule. Kind of just went along with it and just just ignored the distractions that were there. I mean, it wasn't that much different than any other week. Yeah, like uh, the piggyback off him, coach just kept it simple. We had a curfew Thursday and Friday at 11 o'clock, which helped a lot. Kept everyone focused during the week. He just told us to stay focused. Don't don't be on mind distractions and things that are going on. Just focus on Gannon and getting the win. I mean, there's a comfort level to that. Once you guys like, once you set your routine. You just know that every exactly. day, it's like Sunday you hit the trainer, Monday you're reviewing tape, Tuesday you're setting up the game plan. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and then it's just week after week, it's just the same thing over and over again. So, yeah, he's getting a nice routine. 
as flow of things. So let's start defensively. Held them to 17 points. That's a, an offense that had a lot of quick players on it. Mm -hmm. What was the game plan and what worked on defense? Uh, game plan was they're, they're, they're a running team. They wanted to run the ball the whole game. So our, our plan was move the defensive line, get their offensive linemen guessing, playing, playing on their heels, not knowing what's going on. And we pretty much we shut down the run game, made them, made them throw the ball, and uh, overall, play, we played well. Played well. And on the offensive side, Put a 40-burger on this team once again, or a 40-burger up on the season once again. What worked for the offense? Oh, well, they're defensively, they run a cover three, so they're more conservative. So uh, our offensive coordinator told us to pretty much run out the sustained drives, keep long drives. And uh, actually, offense is click. You know, last week, Clarion, our receivers were clicking. We put up 62 points, but now we ran the ball this game, the running game click. So pretty much sustained drives, keep long drives, convert them for third down, and just score points. There is no greater fan of you than the man sitting right next to me. Thank you, appreciate Re really it. Really and truly. Yeah, I, I got it. I mean, from the, <laughs> yeah, thanks for outing me on that one, Drew. <laughs> but, uh, no, seriously, though, because I thought, we talked about it pregame, and we said, you know, it would be interesting because all the tape on Edinburgh offense is all through the air. Sure. And I said, you know, they still got Fletch. Fletch is a weapon. They need to let the horse out the barn and let the guy run, sure. you know. And I was I was amazed that they did that to begin with, and you had a couple of those long breaks. Yes, sir. I mean, like like I said, our receiving core is very talented. You know, some weeks the receivers would be hot, some weeks we run the ball, the run game would get started. But uh, this game, like I said, the cover three, the run game was there, so they just fed me the ball, and I did what I could do to help my team win. Yeah, you had a, um, a couple of – what goes through your head, like, once you – you hit that hole, you make that break, and then you see in front of you, and it's like maybe a safety or a cornerback. Are you thinking? Are you thinking six at that point? Uh, every time, you know, the goal of the run is to score. But my um, running back coach, Coach O'Neill, always says, uh, "Stem the stem the stem the defender up. So get on his toes and make a move late to to make him guess where you're going to go." So every time I touch the ball, I want to score. So that's my mindset every time. On the defensive side of the ball, again, getting turnovers, that has been a, a key thing for, for you guys in the, in the game. Um, what, I mean, what is, is so different this year about being able to, to get those takeaways and, and convert them? I think it's just attention to detail. I mean, in practice, just, just the repeated reps over and over again, seeing, see, watching film, just knowing their tendencies and knowing what they're going to do, just, it's just greater attention to detail, I think is the biggest thing. I think every week this defense has been challenged, and we talked about, you know, this week going in knowing that Gannon was a ground and pound type of thing, and, and I was like, you know, they're going to have to win the war up front, okay. and you guys executed it. I think you held them to only like 82 total yards. 82 rushing yards, yeah. Which yep. is amazing for this. I mean, how does, like, once it starts to get going and, and you guys know that, okay, we're doing this, like, how does that factor in or do you just kind of put that away and just focus on each play as it you goes? You focus on each play as it goes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't, you don't let previous plays affect you. You don't let, you're not, you're not thinking about what's going to happen after this play. You just play in first down, next play, play in second down, so on and so on. So you just focus on, focus on the play you're on right now. So this week coming up, we have uh, another local rivalry in Mercyhurst. This is a, we get to travel to Mercyhurst, but it's kind of a pseudo. You guys get to stay home, sleep in your own bed. It's only a 20 minute drive. Um, what are the benefits to that? Uh, it's pretty much a home game, really. <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, we wake up, we do our normal pregame meal in the morning, same time, same thing as it would be as a home game. Get on the bus, go to Mercyhurst, what, 20 minute ride. It's pretty much the amount of time we would have to go home at a home game anyway, and then you're in the locker room getting ready. So, I mean, yeah, it's just beneficial because you don't have that. It's just, it's, again, it's a routine thing. Mm -hmm. You get to stay in that routine. Can you guys talk about how we've noticed how one side of the ball kind of feeds off the other, like offense makes an outstanding play, and then that pumps the defense up, and the defense goes out and makes a stop, and then, you know, it, it's like one hand washing the other. Can you guys talk about that a little bit? Yeah, as far as offense, you know, we want to, score points to keep the defense off the field and to give them momentum to stop the opposite offense. You know, if our offense is clicking, they all go to the defense and tell them, you know, hold it down, keep doing what you're doing, keep grinding, you know. So we're scoring points, the defense is hype, and that gives them more motivation to stop them on third down and to make them punt the ball. So. Yeah, this is, I think it's an excitement thing, you know, when you're seeing the other side, the other side of the ball, <clears throat> excuse me, just doing well, doing great things. Just, 
you get excited. You want to go out there and do the same thing. So I mean, yeah, it's just it's an energy thing. And I mean, speaking of energy, the thing that we we've noticed that we absolutely love is is during the kickoffs, the jumping around, the hipping and hawing. Mm. Whose idea was that, and when did that that start? <laughs> well, it was definitely Coach Lustig. You know, he's a younger coach, which is of extremely beneficial for us. You know, having a younger guy and a young staff, everyone's running around, getting us excited. And he showed us a clip of uh, Michigan, you know, before their kickoff. They're jumping up, dancing. And he just wants us to have energy on the field and have the crowd have energy because that gets everyone on the team pumped up and ready to go from the start. Now, I, I probably should have asked this question earlier, but what is it like to play in front of this crowd? Especially, it was a homecoming crowd, so there was everyone coming back to watch you guys sure. play. What is it like to play in front of a Sox Harrison Stadium crowd? It's awesome. It's awesome. I mean, what, we were, we were, no, we're number one in attendance right now in the PSAC. It's, it's just crazy, just the, the environment, just the, the sound level, everything. It's just, it's just intense. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a fun experience. It's a fun experience. Yeah, like last year for me, I was red-shirted, so I was on the sideline. And I just felt the energy from the crowd. You know, it's very exciting. And this year that I'm playing, I feed off the crowd. I feed off my teammates. So the whole environment is just exciting to play for. Yeah, a lot of the, um, a lot of the alumni we had a chance to talk to because they were coming back, and some of the, the Hall of Fame inductees, and they really talk about the family atmosphere or family ask what it's like being on a sports team here at Edinburgh. Can you guys add your own little take onto that? Well, uh, Coach Lustig, you know, he's all about alumni and making everyone feel like they're a part of the team. And, you know, he says three, four years down the road, you guys can always come back and feel part of the team. You know, your job, you won't be on the team as a player, but you'll still be on the team as a family. And everything, everything you do to contribute to the program is going to be noticed. And he just always does a great job of, of having everyone around that's been here. Yeah. All right, so you know, I want to say thank you guys both so much for uh, coming on the Scott Sports Show. I said thank you for having thank us. Thank you, And we wish you the very best against Mercyhurst. Thank, thank you very much. And the Scott Sports Show will roll along right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Scott Sports Show. We are now joined by some volleyball. Here we're with head coach Missy Sobolewski and Morgan Sharp. Thank you guys both for joining us. Thank you for having us. So this past week, again, we continue to roll. I, I'm going to claim I'm going to claim that it's good luck because every time you come on the show, we have a, a good week volleyball coach. So that's what I'm going to. That's my opinion of it. But what did you see from your team last week? Uh, yeah. We just, uh, you know, we're, we're playing well. We're controlling the first ball. Um, and the girls are really responding to um, the strategy that we're trying to use uh, versus the teams. Um, you know, I just think we're preparing well. Um, but on any given night, any team is um, deadly in the PSAC. So um, we just take it game by game. We got Slippery Rock tonight. And, um, you know, hopefully we're focused and ready to play them and focus on them. And, and it's on the road, so it's always uh, tougher to win on the road. So, And we just got off the weekend road, so <laughs> looking forward to being home this weekend. And with a, a road stretch like this, what is the challenge as a player to, to deal with a road stretch like that? Um, maybe the hype that comes with the streak. So we have to remember that it's one game at a time and not worry about past games because they don't matter for the future games. Yeah, I mean, we always talk that streaks are a good thing, but... Is there ever is there an, ever a negative to take away from going on, on a streak like this, being so successful? Is there other mind games that come into play? Oh, I'll start with you, Morgan. <laughs> um, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. um. it, it's just, you know, <laughs> go out and do your job yeah, every day. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Coach, do you have any? You know, I, I don't even, I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. um, Somebody asked me yesterday, so what's your winning streak? I have no idea. I don't <laughs> pay attention to it. It's literally, we take it game by game. Our girls don't talk about it. Um, it's not something that, that's talked about in practice or in the locker room or in our um, film room. It's just literally we take the next match. So, so being in so many, um, so many games and you've had um, a lot of blowouts, you've had a lot of straight set wins, how does that go, like building your confidence going into like 
the next match, or is, is all that just kind of put on a shelf somewhere? Yeah, we definitely say before every game that any past game is not relevant. It's just this game that matters because that's all we can work with. Coach, uh, and this week you have Slippery Rock today, and then later in the week on Friday, which that game can be seen uh, right here on ETV. Um, what do you see from, from this week? Again, you mentioned the PSCC is always so tough. So what do you see from the two matchups this week? Um, well, we have three matches three this matches week. Three matches this um, week, sorry. And um, Slippery Rock is always extremely def a defensive-oriented team. Mm -hmm. um, and over the past couple of years, she's um, added some nice, nice offense to that as well. So it's going to be tough to get the ball on the floor. They're going to be scrappy. It'll be frustrating. So we really have to get our girls to execute where we want them to put the ball. Um, Clarion is a big team. They're extremely um, athletic. A lot of power will be thrown at you at the net, a, a decent-sized block. Um, so, you know, that that is, in itself is, is going to be tough. Um, IUP um, has taken a lot of teams to five, um, some good teams, so they're going to be someone to contend with as well. So we have three tough matches this week, and like I said, we'll take Slipper Rock first, and then we'll move on to Clarion, mm -hmm. and then we'll move on to IUP. And, um, you know, hopefully... Um, we just we stay healthy um, as healthy as we are right now and uh, we stay focused and, and morgan i've asked every player who's come in here this question about the team and the unit together how how close do you feel that this team is with one another i definitely think we're like best friends because mm -hmm. we have to be because we're around each other more than we would be anyone else so it's a good group of girls <laughs> all right coach so uh, you know take game game by game, and we wish you the very best uh, going forward this week, and thank you so much for coming on the Scott Sports Show. Thank you. Thank you. And the Scott Sports Show will roll along right after this. Don't go anywhere. My experience at Perico has been so great. I feel like it's really my time for school now. I tried going back to school when I first graduated from high school. I just wasn't ready. It's closer to home. It's very much more affordable than the other colleges in the city. When I finished my degree here at Perico, it would provide me with higher pay. I can actually grow more in my company than I would if I wasn't going to school. Perico College, affordable, career-ready education. We dig deep. We overcome obstacles. We come together. We prepare. We hit the ground running. And we achieve our goals. We train hard and we compete even harder. We reach new heights. We, we win. win. And at Edinburgh University, we create champions on and off the field. NCAA Division II has much to cheer about. As nearly 100,000 student athletes compete with passion and pride, and I'm pleased to share the best news of all. Student athletes are outperforming the rest of the D2 student body in graduation rates. Just another reason why you'll hear us say with pride, I chose Division II. Learn more at D2SA.org. Well, that's all we have for you for the Scott Sports Show. But before we go, let's take a look at this week upcoming for Edinburgh Athletics. <laughs> And so remember to keep up to date on all things Edinburgh Athletics. Go to GoFightingScots.com or EdinburghNow.com. Have a great day, everyone, and go Borough.